you're doing well. Well, look, I got my tomato plants planted. I've got my string beans planted because that's about all I eat. A little bit of broccoli, string beans, asparagus, only if it's cooked right. Uh, let me see, corn. I'm not a real vegetable guy. Now, tomatoes, but I understand they're a fruit. Love tomatoes. So we got to have the string beans. Got those down there. We're, we're expecting good return on that. Peppers, like the peppers. Got those planted. Looking forward to a very fruitful harvest this summer. Cucumbers, got those, although they do make you burp. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. It's summer's coming. I'm just so excited. And by the way, by the way we, have, we have our conference coming up. It's going to be in August. Uh, right now we know of a number of people that are coming. Dr. Lewis will be here. Pastor Jerry Graziano and Karen will be here. Uh, we've been in contact with the Kincaids from Italy. I think they're going to be here. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel and Liz, they're going to be here. Uh, we're excited, uh, and I hope you uh, will put it on your calendar. Uh, if you place it there for the 11th through the 13th, you'll be doing well. Um, it's going to be a blessed time. Eric Lind is going to be speaking there. Uh, the Steinhelbers from Luther Rice College and Seminary. Dr. Steinhelber and Crystal will be here. It's going to be a very special time, and I hope you'll put it on your calendars and set that time apart. Uh, we're looking forward to it. But let me just take a moment. Uh, we've talked about heart wounds on Monday. Um, those things that are just deep and painful, you can't get past it, and, and, and no one can just soothe it. And how do we cope with those deep aspects of our life, things that are unanswered, perhaps, at this time? Uh, the Word of God speaks in Hebrews chapter 11, and towards the end of that chapter, uh, about those people that didn't get the answer. They, they were sawn asunder. They were slain by the sword. They wandered around in sheepskins and you know, they huddled in caves and all these things. Uh, they didn't get the, the answer that others had gotten, certainly. It says that the world wasn't worthy of them. Just say that many of the things that happened that caused such great pain in our heart, uh, typically the actions of another, maybe we can even look at ourselves and say that we had much or something to do with it. But either way, it's painful. Uh, we shared the verse there in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 18 from Jeremiah 31 15 that speaks of the death of the children there in, in Bethlehem after Herod had killed all the children two, year, two years old and under. A heart pain and that the love that the body of Christ shares not knowing a person people in the body don't need to know and Perhaps often it's not even wise to let everybody know all the things that are going on in our lives or all the things that have gone on. That's a, a weight that you place on another person to not judge, to not see you in a different light. And unless it's absolutely necessary, there's, there really very simply is no need because the love that Christ shares, the care that we have there in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 26 and 27 for one another is a care that is beyond our intellectual understanding. It's the love of Christ that comes from the Holy Spirit that searches out the deep things of our heart. Well, the verse in James chapter 1 and verse 2 says, when you happen to fall, brethren, into a variety, there's a variety of trials, circumstance, situation, th things that come up in our life. He said immediately, count it all joy. Now the word for joy is the same word for thanks, basically same root, same derivative. It's the same root for a gift or giving. Charizomai, speaking of the giving of a gift, but Count it all joy means I can be thankful even though I don't understand it. Uh, this is why 
there in First Thessalonians 5 and verse 19 and on, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I, there's a sense where we don't have to understand. And there's a sense where we understand that the one who has been tempted in all points yet without sin and knows has suffered through so many things on our behalf there in Hebrews 2 and verse 14 and on, so that he can come to our aid in our time of need, um, that he knows and he meets us. I believe that we as believers have this incredible power or ability. The very word power comes from the, the same root as the, the term ability, to be able to do something. We have this ability. And that ability is, unlike so many others, we can be thankful. We can have a sense of not exuberant joy, but I realize that none of these issues are greater than the God whom I know and love, and secondly, the God who ministers to me through those who know and love him. Hopefully that's your family. Hopefully that's your church. Hopefully that's your, you know, the people that you are close to in the realm of your church. But God ministers to us. He cares for us through others. Not like they have to understand our needs so that they give to us, but he ministers his love to us through others and it soothes our heart. We can look forward to that. I don't know about you, but I look forward to that. To me, that's one of the greatest aspects of church, is people and the care that they show. Not, I'm not talking about they know exactly what's going on in your life and they do something to make it better. They may know nothing about what's going on in your life, but the love that they have in Christ and the faith that they invest through Christ in you reaches and meets the need. Till next time, friends. God bless you.